The head of football at Port Adelaide is Chris Davies. He joins us on the line. CD, good morning. Thanks for joining us. No worries, Kane. Andrew? How did the operation go and, and how is he recovering? Well, I mean, you know, the, the operation went as well as it possibly could. You know, he had a, an arthroscopy to to stabilise the, the joint. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, recovering well so far and obviously the next couple of weeks will be, um, you know, pretty important as to when Ollie's able to come back and play. So just to um, get the details of the procedure, he didn't need a full shoulder reconstruction, which would have seen him certainly miss the first part of the season. It was more an arthroscope and some tidying up and some tightening of some ligaments? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, we, we went through a process on uh, on Monday, I think it was, when you probably saw the pictures of Ollie training us to make a decision as to whether we thought he needed an operation you know, or not. Um, yeah, clearly at that point, you know, he was he was running relatively unhindered. Um, you know, he had good strength, but you know, our, our medical team made the decision to say, look, you know, we'll get it done now rather than go into the season. Um, you know, concerned that it might slip out again. So uh, the the best possible you know, scenario, I guess, for for what we went into uh, to, to fix up yesterday. And do you think he'll eventually need to get it fully reconstructed at the end of the season once the campaign is done? Oh, I guess that's a that's a potential, but um, you know, right now we'd be saying that um, that the decision in the first place was whether we got it done at all. Um, and I think you know we we should be able to position Ollie now to have a really you know strong start to the season, and, and we'll make whatever decisions need to be made you know from a future perspective at the end of the year. So D- CD, the debate is raging here, and um, the AFL players and the Players Association have come out fiercely and defended the players for their off-field activities, as has the club. And I get Ollie is a interesting situation because, as you said yesterday, he's been skiing since he was six. He does it with the club's blessing. And this is the first time that anything has happened to him. But where do you draw the line as a footy club? Uh, I mean, are players allowed to jump out of an aeroplane? Can, can they get a trail bike on a motorbike? Can, can, I don't know, can they go surfing? Clearly they can go skiing. We've seen Tom Jonas saying that he goes snow skiing in the off-season. Where do you draw the line as a club? Yeah, I think the most important thing to all of this is, is the context of whatever you're talking about. I mean, clearly... Yeah, there are some people who are who are more confident at doing things than others. Uh, Ollie, in this situation, as you said, is a guy who's um, you know, been uh, born and raised around the water and, and is um, absolutely confident. And we had you know full confidence that, that, that he was able to do the things he he, he does. Um, you know, there there is a clause in the guy's contracts in regard to hazardous behaviour. You know, it specifies a, a whole heap of extreme sports. Um, but as I say, the, the context of what you're talking about is is the most important thing. If a, if a person is going out doing something for the first time ever, um, and it's and it's a, a situation that we might think is dangerous, then the club might get involved. But you know that's not the situation. You know, in, in Ollie's case, um, you know the, the club um, is absolutely keen to make sure that the guys have an outlet away from footy and. Um, and this is an accident that um, we obviously wish didn't happen. Is it a little wake-up call for some of the other players in that space as well? To, you know, young men, uh, access to money, uh, full of confidence, where you need to sit them down and say, look, guys, let, let's have another chat about thinking about what you do away from the game. Because we've seen you know, we've seen players injured doing all sorts of things, including Alex Fasolo over the weekend. Do you, do you need to caution your players again on, on the risks of what they do outside of footy? Uh, look, I think that... Um, in this situation, it's it's going to be pretty well documented how how uh, uh, injuries can affect people's season or you know have a have a significant effect on people's careers. Um, yeah, that's not something that we'll have to broach directly because I'm sure that the guys are, are contemplating what they're going to do the next time they get a break. You know, right now. Um, but as I say, you know, the, the stress right now is is to say that. Um, from a club's perspective, we are um, you know, comfortable that Ollie was out there. We we are um, you know disappointed that he's injured, but at the same time, you know we think that the balance between what the guys do at training and what they do off field is something that we've got to really concentrate on and and uh, uh, allow the guys to explore themselves. 
I said, you guys, obviously, you've been very open with uh, your thoughts on the situation, but in terms of uh, Ollie's future skiing exploits, would, does that mean he can't ever ski again? Because I imagine at the moment it's kind of 50-50 of, of what people think, whether it's okay or not. What happens in 12 months' time if he hurts himself again and you'd expect that uh, people would really come down on him? Do you need to now say, look, Ollie, you've got a, a bit of a dicky shoulder with this one now? I think your water skiing days might be over. Oh, that's something that we'll, we'll broach down the track. I mean, right now, um, to be clear, inside the club, it's not 50-50. Um, you know, we're, we're 100% behind um, Ollie in, in what he was doing. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to have a look at these types of situations and make assessments. Um, you know, clearly, um, you know, we don't, we don't want our guys to get injured away from the club. But as I say, it's, it's important that they've got an outlet as well. Apart from this and the drama with all this happening this week, you're happy with how the pre-season is gone and how the boys are tracking ahead of round one? Yeah, we are. I mean, you know, we had a really good camp towards the end of, um, you know, the, the break before Christmas. Um, the guys have come back in, in fantastic nick, which is a credit to them considering, you know, they had an extra week off over Christmas this year, Kane, as you're probably aware. Um, so, the, you know, the guys coming back in, in fantastic means that, you know, we can get into, you know, the specific, you know, football match play and, and um, other work that the guys, that the coaches want to get into quicker. So, um, you know, we feel like we're in a, in a good spot. You know, time will tell. You know, you, you're, uh, you wait at this point of the year to start to face opposition. But um, right now we're, we're feeling that, um, that the guys are preparing well for the start of the season. And just an update on some of the other guys in the rehab room. Charlie Dixon, uh, how's the big fella tracking? Yeah, look, I mean, Charlie's going along OK. He's off, he's off legs for the next uh, week or so. We'll make an assessment as to, you know, what the next um, you know, part of Charlie's rehab is, you know, uh, next week once the guys get back from, from uh, uh, another uh, CBA-required um, break. So, um, you yeah, know, we expect him to continue to progress into the start of the season from next week. And Matty Broadbent? Yeah, you know, Bronte's um, going really well at the moment. So, uh, you know, wrapped to see... Him back up and about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. He had a obviously a horrid year last year from an injury perspective, but you know to see him out training, you know, fully now with the main group is uh, is a great outcome for him. And, and we've got another guy, Willem Drew, who, who missed the whole year last year as well, who's who's doing some fantastic things training as well. So uh, now look, that uh, that rehab list is is getting less, um, despite obviously. Ollie now being on it, but um, you know, overall we're we're pretty pleased with the health of the group. Uh, so they, sorry to keep uh, just keep uh, smashing you with these rehab questions and the Ollie wine stuff, but um, I've got one here for you, mate. What happens with someone like Charlie Dixon? Yeah, he likes to ride motorbikes and all those types of things. It's potentially a risky behaviour. Is he not allowed to ride his motorbikes if he's say in the rehab group and he's recovering from an injury? Oh, look, you know, again, you know, Charlie's a guy who who uh, enjoys his motorbikes. We're not going to get into, you know, the specifics of, uh, of what each individual person can do. We ask the guys to take, you know, the, the due amount of care. Um, I'm sure that, uh, that Charlie has ridden his motorbike over the last 12 weeks. Um, <laughs> if he, he, he's probably actually driven it up with, uh, with Chad Corn yeah. somewhere. So uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's, uh, yeah, those guys, as I say, you know, I understand where people are coming from where they, when they question this, but um, from, a, from a club's point of view, this is, this is vital that they get an opportunity to um, express themselves away from the footy club. You know, we're, we're, we're pleased that they're spending time with each other away from the footy club. It means that they're you know, a group who enjoy each other's company, and we think that that will pay dividends during the year. CD, thanks so much for joining us and answering some tricky questions, and uh, we'll chat to you throughout the year. Good luck for round one coming up soon. Good on you guys. Have a good day. Round one for Port Adelaide. Melbourne taking on the power. That one is at the MCG, the home of football. Saturday, March the 23rd, that one will come around quickly. I'd be very surprised if Ollie Wines is there, but as Chris Davies said, got away with it pretty well. Uh, didn't need a full reconstruction, did admit perhaps that's going to be an option um, at the end of the season, uh, as long as he can well, hopefully get through the season with that shoulder and holds up, but maybe uh, the best possible result for the club and wines. Just quickly, because we've got Peter Siddle uh, not too far away, who takes his spot then if he's not in round one? Oh, there's plenty. Uh, Rockcliffe would like to see him go in there and share some responsibility. Power Pepper, they're talking up his pre-season. Um, you know, Boak, Gray, Ebert, there's lots of players that they can put through there.